Great. So welcome to Muna class with Rav Shalom Arash Shlita. Very honored again for our second class together with our beautiful English translation from the Choshev Rav Dayan Elgrod. So once again, we have his daily halakha corner, his wish series growing together with our Amuna tour online with the Rav Shlita. We want to thank him again and all the team for hosting us together. And we're very excited to begin tonight with our first question, which the Rav Dayan Elgrod will open us with. The first question regards Judaism and astrology. What is Judaism's outlook on astrology? Is it halakhically allowed or not? The Gemara tells us there was a great sage by the name of Shmuel. <laughs> that he knew everything that happened in the heavens and in the skies, was very well, well versed in astrology. The Gemara gives us several stories about Rabbi Akiva where astrologers told him what is going to happen and they were right. <laughs> They knew and they saw what was going to happen. We have the Holy Torah. And we have the Halacha. It's like as if someone would ask me, am I allowed to learn the map of Jerusalem? <laughs> Of course you're allowed to learn and study the map of Jerusalem. These are realistic things. But a person must be careful how he interprets it. As long as he interprets it correctly, it is allowed. <laughs> I want to thank again um, all the people that are involved behind the scenes because it, it's not stam that we were able to put this together in our new studio. I want to thank Hashem for bringing us here together with the Rav. And we want to begin our second question, which please, her Rav, will lead us to go ahead again. Thank you. The next question is, are we in the days of Mashiach? Is Hashem gathering in the exiles now? Thank Hashem, we're seeing miracles living here in Eretz Yisrael. Hashem is always building Eretz Yisrael, both spiritually and physically. Baruch Hashem, many Jews are feeling that the safest place for them is now in Eretz Yisrael. And Baruch Hashem, there are many communities who have gathered from all over the world and are very successful here in Israel. We are certainly now in the times where the exiles are being gathered and in the times of Mashiach. Mashiach can reveal himself every single day. It is written that a person must believe that Mashiach can come every single day. We want to thank again Nissen Black for coming last week. This is one of the opportunities we can have special guests to come and join the Rav. Please God will announce them as they come and people can make recommendations. Also the questions we've been given are really appreciated. Keep sending them in to our ellie.goldsmith at brezov.coil 
uh, email. It's all the links and everything are below. You can join the Rav there as well to partner with all these wonderful causes. We'd like to again to go to our third question with Rav Dainel God helping us. Thank you. The third question is, what do I tell my friends when they're losing their moon and bitachon? They feel that Hashem is sitting back and letting the world destroy itself. Our Heavenly Father, the Creator of the world, supervises everything to the smallest details. Even a leaf that falls down from a tree is supervised by Hashem, where it will fall, how it will fall. All through history, the, the world has gone through terrible, terrible things, thousand times worse than what we are going through now in these times and periods. And only after when things pass by and they're finished, only then do we realize that there is something here that was created and something that was governed by the creator of the world. Sometimes there was a very, very high payment to achieve the things that we have achieved. The things that the world has gone through, holocaust, programs. If we would have been now in those times when those things happened, what would we have said? Much more difficult than what we're going through today. That's why we need to know. I always say that this world is like driving in a bus. <laughs> the bus has a driver. And the driver is the creator, blessed be his name. If a person doesn't trust the driver, and he tries to drive himself, <laughs> trying to pull back the chair, then he lives in great suffering. But a person who has a Muna, that is a good driver, true, one doesn't always understand what the driver is doing. But we know that everything is governed by the driver. He sits in the bus and enjoys. He eats, he drinks, he learns, he looks through the window. We need to know there's a leader in this world. Everything is under complete control of the Creator. And there's no coincidence, not the smallest coincidence whatsoever. We don't always understand. True, we don't understand. But we believe that the Creator will not just let His world go by without being governed. I always give the parable that a person who walks in in the middle of a show, and he walks in the middle, and he sees a husband screaming at his wife. He says to himself, what kind of a husband is that? The person who's sitting next to him says to him, if you would have come at the beginning, you'd have known that she, deserved to be, she deserves to be screamed at much more. 
חושבים שמה שקורה עכשיו, זהו, זה רק שייך לעכשיו. People think that what happens now is only relevant for now. יש, יש גלגולים, ויש... Their, pre- their previous lives that we have gone through, their different things that we need to atone for. The Creator knows what we don't know, sees what we don't see. And that's why we trust Him 100%. And a person who has a moon of faith, his life is heaven on this earth. And even though things happen in this world, whatever happens, he still lives in heaven on this earth. Why? Because he lives with a moon, with faith. He knows that everything in his life is governed 100%. And he only had, only good things happen to him. And he will only have good things in the future. So what we all need to do is strengthen ourselves in Emunah, learn Emunah, and live Emunah. So we want to thank again everyone, and if there are any technical issues, we appreciate the feedback. Um, this is our first uh, class without a guest, and our second class together with the Rav. And we have to really, 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 really jump on this opportunity. Everyone out there, please share all our Emunah online classes and with the Rav and our online community to, to grow the Immuna community with Brez of Torah and Brez of Israel and the Brez of English and all the wonderful most that the Rav has given us by all his years of sharing this important process. So we want to thank again everybody who joins us and to keep sharing and liking and following and subscribing and getting the word out there more and more. Thank God we're seeing the growth but it can really each person themselves out there can contribute even more. Thank you. So we want to ask again, Rav D- Dain Elgad, to give us another question. Thank you for everyone. Next question is, people did not speak out against the killings in Jersey or in Monsi. What is Hashem's message? I believe that if anti-black and anti-Jewish issues were dealt with together, both would be resolved much, much sooner than dealing with them separately. Hashalai Rav, what is the difference between the events that happened in America? עם כל הפגיעה בקהילה השחורה, אנשים לא דיברו על זה. והשואל כאן כותב שהוא מאמין שאם היו מטפלים גם בנושאים של האנטי-יהדות ואנטי-הקהילה השחורה, אז הרי שהדברים היו נפתרים הרבה יותר מהר ביחד. קודם כל, אני שמח לשמוע שהשואל חושב נכון. First of all, I'm happy to hear that the person who's asking this question is thinking correctly. נכון, באמת. וזה ממש... צריכים לשפר את החברה. True. We need to improve society. Everyone on a personal level needs to know that he is no better than anyone else in this world. In the Creator's eyes, all are equal. The Creator loves all. And the Creator wants us to live all together in harmony and love. To respect each other. The Mishnah says, who is a respected person? He who respects others. The Mishnah does not say, who is a respected person? He who others respect him. The Mishnah says that a respected person is one who respects others, respects everyone. When you respect other people, you respect the Creator. When you disrespect someone, you disrespect the Creator who created him. The Holy Gemara tells a story about Rabbi al the son of Rabbi Shimon, who came back from studying in Yeshiva after a long period, and he was very exalted about his learning, very happy about it. And someone turned to him and said to him, Hello, my rabbi and my mentor. 
And Rabbi al Azad turned to him and said, How ugly is this person? That person who Rabbi al Azad spoke to turned to him and said, Go to the Creator and tell him what an ugly vessel you created. Rabbi al Azad understood that he made a grave mistake. <laughs> because that ugly person, did he create himself to be so ugly? The Creator created him ugly. Did he create himself in a different color? Did he create himself born in a different city, born here, born there? Every single person was created by the Creator in the exact way that the Creator wanted to create him. If you respect the Creator, respect his creations, respect the people that he created. So Rabbi al indeed asked that person for forgiveness. That person did not want to forgive him. Rabbi al followed that ugly person into the city and until people in that city beseeched that person to forgive Rabbi al the Holy Gemara tells us a story that happened. Our Torah does not make anything look better or prettier than what it really is. When Moshe Rabbeinu makes a mistake, the Torah writes it. When Rabbi al the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, made a mistake, the Torah tells us about it. And he is happy that one learns about his mistakes. That we learn from his mistakes. That's why we need to know that indeed if people had the awareness that they were created by the Creator, and we were all created and important by the Creator in exactly the same way. All this racism, all this persecution is a grave mistake of society. Just like we spoke about it last week, there's a common denominator. The black community is persecuted. The Jewish community is persecuted. We need this awareness. In every single place, we need to know that we must respect others, respect all of Hashem's creations. Can a black person not be beneficial for society, not be a good lawyer, a good doctor? The same applies to a Jewish person. Can he too not be beneficial to society and be a good person? When one does that, one can actually proceed with society. We have many non-Jews who came close to us and became our students. It's very good that one speaks about these issues. Very good. If everyone would do some of their own personal work and improvement, 
And will have a positive opinion on the whole world, on all of its creations, on all of the people. Everyone can affect and influence the whole world. And that will help. Thank you. So we invite people to join all our different platforms. One of them is the audio. We have Birds of Israel um, podcast, so you can go over what the Rav's speaking about, such important current issues, and we appreciate, again, the questions that everyone sends in. Baruch Hashem, we've had so many, so in a way, I guess, would actually be preventing us getting through all the wonderful questions. Um, we want to ask everyone to continue to keep liking and sharing and forwarding everything we're doing, and please contribute. We want your feedback, and thank God some of the feedback recently has been very positive about all the different classes going on. So we thank all the Rabbanim, and I do would like to honor my father with a question, if the Rav is masking, that he asked, when is Corona going to be over, and how can we make it end soon? This is my father's shayla. Today and last week, I took out my whole yeshiva for them to daven for a whole hour. A whole hour we daven just that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should abolish the corona disease from the world. I'm very happy with this question. Because I'd like to have many prayers. Thank Hashem, me and my yeshiva. We merit, we do, we pray. But I'd like for everyone to take part in this. You may not have the power of prayer that we do so you can stand a whole hour in prayer. But 10 minutes, can you pray? So everyone should accept upon himself to pray for this matter for 10 minutes a day. In my yeshiva, I asked my students to pray for an hour every day. Everyone will accept upon himself 10 minutes a day. Simply speak to our Heavenly Father, to the Creator, in your own language. The creator of the world, please, you brought this disease to the world, please take it away. It is such a great damage to the whole world. Your world is so beautiful. Very, very beautiful. And everything is only getting nicer and more and more beautiful. Please abolish this virus. Take it away from the whole world. Repeat the words, please have mercy on us, please help us. Even without this virus, there's so many difficulties, so many things that we have got to handle with and cope with. So certainly prayer is important. But the message that we received from this whole corona thing, what is the message? That Hashem, blessed be His name, wanted everyone to realize that there is a king to this world. Nothing should be taken for granted. People go to pray in shuls. No one ever thought of saying thank you for that. King David says, and I, with your grace, shall come to your home to pray, for, to pray before you. Because King David, who was completely full of faith, nothing with him was taken for granted. 
When he merited something, he realized it's a gift from Hashem. We saw that people were not able to come to the Western Wall to come to the grave site of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai to go to shuls. Everything was completely closed. The girls in our schools say thank you every single day that the schools have come back and functioning and they're learning in the schools again. <laughs> and they pray that the schools will not shut down again. And we thank Hashem every single day for coming to shul. And we pray that the shuls will never again close. Understanding this point that nothing should be taken for granted. The Creator can bring something minute that one cannot see, <laughs> and it can paralyze the whole world. <laughs> the heavens, the skies are closed, no flights. <laughs> everything is closed. And that's why we're asking from Hashem to open everything. <laughs> and we'll know to say thank you for everything. <laughs> and we'll know to pray for everything. <laughs> May we merit. Amen. I want to thank again the questions and we want a final last two questions. So if anyone wants to put in anything live, they can do quickly on the Instagram live that we're seeing and the other places will take the questions and keep them for the following weeks. So please keep sending your questions in. And for now, we will we'll go ahead with the last two questions from Rabbi Dayan Elgrod. And we thank you again for tuning in. A question here is asked by a woman who four years ago gave birth to a baby with a cleft lip and a pellet. And uh, thank Hashem she is pregnant again and it was found that again she will be expecting a baby with a cleft lip and pellet and she's asking how should she handle this from an Amuna point of view. It's very difficult for her. This is obviously a very difficult trial. But there's no coincidence in this world. And there are no mistakes. I'm very happy that the questions are coming in in such a pattern and form. Because no one knows who is the person who's asking these questions. I myself don't know who asks these questions. And therefore we can answer in a realistic and completely objective way. Because we're not hurting or insulting anyone. There are no mistakes in this world. Certainly a cleft, lip and left, a cleft lip and palate is something that is related to speech, to speaking, to the things that we say. The first thing that a person needs in his life is emuna, faith. That this is what Hashem wanted, this is what the creator of the world wanted. And if she would have merited to say thank you for what she had previously, for the first child that was born in such a way, and not just saying thank you here and there, but really doing the law of gratitude. And she would have said thank you properly. The creator of the world, this is what you wanted, thank you. I'm near certain that she would not have had the second trial then. And even now, if she says thank you, that she was told 
that her unborn baby will also be with a cleft left pellet. And she will do the, the, the law of gratitude, which she'll soon explain how does it work. Hashem will heal him in her womb. Amen. Amen. So what is the law of gratitude? When a person has a problem, a difficulty, something lacking, he, for example, is not married yet, he doesn't have children, he's sick, he doesn't have a livelihood, he has a child that is straight off the path. Any kinds of hardship that you have in this world, he needs to say 15 minutes of gratitude to Hashem for these difficulties specifically. Fifteen minutes, the creator of the world, this is what you want, thank you. My father, a father only does good for his children. So even though I don't understand, I believe that this is for my better good. And that's why I'm saying thank you for all the hardships and difficulties. Father, you certainly love me. And even though my heavenly father loves me, he's doing something to me. And that's why I'm saying to him, thank you. And that's how a person should speak for 15 minutes. Not just saying thank you, thank you, but speaking to Hashem. My father loves me. My father is upset when he sees me being upset. My father will be happy when I will have only good things. My father wants me to have good things. And even though, it's not exactly going the way I would have expected. And that's why I'm saying thank you. Because if you believe that the hardships that have happened to you, it came from a father that loves you, that is upset when you're upset, that only wants for you to have, to have good things, and will only be happy when you are happy and when good things happen to you, he can do it. And nevertheless, he has given you hardships and difficulties. A hundred percent, this is for your better good. That's why I say thank you. I always hear stories about people who say thank you and they find their soulmate, they become healthy, they get whatever they ask for. I walked from my home in the direction of my yeshiva. Someone stopped his car. He saw me and said to me, Rabbi, I've been looking for you for so long to say to you thank you. They didn't have children for many years. The doctor said to his wife, you cannot have children. Maybe if someone else, a non-Jew, will be, will, will be willing to donate you some of her ovaries. But if there is a chance, that will be the last chance that will be possible. She said to him, can you please write down what you're saying to me? He said to her, why not? I'm the doctor. I know this is the reality. He took his blank sheet and he wrote everything down. She said to him, thank you. And she left. And then she started doing the law of gratitude every single day. <laughs> she said to him, creator of the world, as you can see the sheets of paper, the doctor said, this is what you want? Thank you very much. 
every single day. She said, thank you, Rav. <laughs> They've already had. <laughs> They've already had a baby, <laughs> and he looked for me earlier to tell me this. <laughs> she, his wife has the letter. She has everything. <laughs> Every single day I hear stories like this. Every time I'll try and tell you a story about how the law of gratitude works. That is why I said, when you say thank you, you see salvation. Why did I call it the law of gratitude? Because it is a law. A hundred percent it works. You say thank you, and all the hardships are not cancelled. It's a law. Just like when you put water on fire. It's a hundred percent that the water will boil. It's a law. It's a physical law. The same thing, you have spiritual laws. And in the spiritual law, when you say thank you, all the hardships are cancelled and annulled. We have the book, I said thank you and saw miracles. There's 190 stories there. We have the, we have the, we have the book. The, the miracles of gratitude. And also there, there are many stories. We have the books in the gates of gratitude, the gods in the garden of faith. There are many books that you can learn Emunah from. <laughs> so when, so it, it, it would be for your better good for all of you to learn Emunah, to know that it is a law. You say thank you, all the hardships are cancelled and annulled. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I want to say thank you to the Rav and to Rav Dainel. God, we'll have one more question, but just to mention, we do have a breslov.co.al on our website, a wonderful store filled with the Rav Svarim, with the holy books of the Rav, the Garden of the Muna series, and you can all definitely order them there with very much ease. I'm happy to help if anyone wants to contact my WhatsApp. And we have a store there listed there of all the Garden of Muna books, all the Garden of Muna books, and you're welcome. Last week we left Nisim with 10 of the Ganamuna books, that was the rule. At all the meetings, when we come to put sites, we give each person, I mean, they buy, but whatever, at a very discounted price, everyone gets 10 books and they give them out. And we'd like to do the same here online. You guys can contact through the store on breadlove.co.il and order your 10 Garden of Amuna books from the series. There's definitely more than 10, so you can definitely make a choice. And we're looking forward to keep sharing that Amuna through books and also through the online classes. So now we'll go to our final question with a lot of thanks to Hashem. We made it to this point, and thank you again, everyone, for tuning in and sharing on. The last question is asked by a woman who's asking for her husband. He works at a job, and he is not happy. He constantly has an ungrateful attitude. She's praying for him, but it doesn't seem to be changing. What should she do? It really is not easy to change a person. True, we've seen in the Gemara and I've seen it with my own eyes that when you pray for someone to do tshuva, it happens. She needs to pray for him that he shall merit to do tshuva. <laughs> that he shall merit to learn my books. <laughs> she should put the books at home on the table. <laughs> and she should pray that Hashem will instill within his heart to learn these books. <laughs> these books change every person. <laughs> She's right, it's not very easy, but if she will dedicate every single day, quarter of an hour of prayer for this matter, she will see results. I would like to ask all the viewers, all the people who are with us now, that you should all pray every single day. That Hashem should cancel and abolish this corona from the whole world. 
And that all the men shall merit to be on Rosh Hashanah in the city Uman in Ukraine. They will be an Uman. And that's why we need to pray for it. And Hashem shall open the sky to our prayers and to our flights. Everyone start praying for this. We need in Rosh Hashanah to be an Uman in Ukraine. Thank you, Rav. Tada Rava. <laughs> Everyone should pray for the Rav to be healthy and strong so we can continue doing these weekly classes. Amen. Please keep sending in your questions and feedback. And we hope to have more special guests to join the Rav and to Sameach with Rav Dayan Elgod and all his wonderful translations and teachings on our Breads of English class, uh, YouTube, plus all the other channels and all the other languages and all the Messias Nefesh from the Rav. That he already did a few classes tonight and we thank him again we thank all of you again because without you listening we wouldn't it wouldn't make this worth it so we really appreciate it and we ask you again to to go to our stores we have free shipping have all kinds of ways to help get the books out there and all the teachings and if you have any ideas or any way to empower it more the Muna teachers should go from strength to strength and mr shem will see any good news from this class and from all of us in the new week thank you very much and have a beautiful shabbos amen לא, זה הרב רק שלושת רבעי שעה שיעור. כל פעם ככה עושים לרב, שיהיה לרב שלושת רבעי שעה שיעור, ואז שיהיה לרב רבע שעה כדי להתארגן משיעור לשיעור. טוב, אבל פה זה הסוף. The Rav says we can do another quarter of an hour. We can do a full hour. אני לא מבחן בבוקר.